So you want to get all nines? Well, so does everyone else. To get a nine in an exam, you need to beat 95% of people that take that exam with you. That's how grade boundaries work. But are you in the top 5% of the people taking that same exam worldwide? Well, here's exactly how to beat 95% of people and get all nines in your GCSEs. Step zero is the mindset. Do this right now with me. Close your eyes and pretend like you're deleting every negative emotion you've had with every subject you've taken so far. Every time you've gotten a question wrong or you felt like a topic is too hard, throw that out the window. It never happened. You need to feel like a newborn baby, curious towards each subject you take, knowing that with enough effort, you can master it. The number one thing that holds people back from getting those top grades, it's their mindset. But now that we fixed it, step one is to create an efficient studying technique. I'm assuming you've watched those how I study 10 hours a day or 12 hours a day videos. Listen, ignore them. If you want to get all nines while keeping your sanity, it's all about efficiency. If you follow this guide properly, I can guarantee that the maximum number of hours you should be studying in a day will be three or four hours if you really need to. But realistically, it could be around one or two hours a day. You could ask, but how do I finish the content for each subject and then do practice questions in such little time? Do you want the truth? Your studying is probably extremely inefficient. But so was mine at some points, so don't worry, here's how I fixed it. The thing that changed how I study was understanding the 80-20 rule. Knowing that 80% of the results will come from 20% of the action, all we need to do is just find that 20% and do it as often as possible. For going through content, that 20% could be making flashcards and then going through them periodically using space repetition and active recall. And once you've gone through the content, it's all about practice questions, doing as many of them as possible. All of the useless activities like reading and highlighting and coloring in your notes, we need to throw them out. That's why a lot of people think that they need to study 8 or 10 or 12 hours a day. But I could stare at a textbook for 2 hours thinking I put in a shift but I've benefited nothing because I wasn't actively studying. But when you do active forms of studying, like making flashcards, going through practice questions, even stuff like blurting, that's when your brain is engaged and challenged. And that's where the benefit is. Now that we have our efficient studying technique, when do we actually study? I truly believe that whatever you prioritize in life will be whatever comes your way. If you prioritize scrolling through TikTok and watching Netflix for hours on end, that's all you're gonna benefit from. But if you prioritize studying and you tell yourself, my goal for the next couple of months is to get all nines, then you put in the work, you will achieve it. But what does that have to do with timing? Well, think of someone who doesn't really prioritize studying. If they really need to study, they might find 30 minutes here and an hour there in a day where they might fit in a studying session. Their timings are inconsistent and they'll probably be at a time that doesn't complement their studying. But if you tell yourself, no matter what, I'm gonna wake up early, study in the morning when no one is awake to distract me and when my brain is as refreshed as possible, all of a sudden you're sleeping and waking up early. You're canceling useless plans with your friends because you know that they're gonna affect your studying session and so on. Make your studying session as early as possible and stay consistent. Because consistent actions is what breeds success, not short bursts of motivation. You also need to remove any major distractions from your life. I'm not saying become a robot and have no fun. I'm saying have fun and relax in a healthy way. Don't relax using Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and Netflix because all they do is just shorten your attention span. If I'm scrolling through social media for five hours a day, my brain could be up here in terms of stimulation. But then how do I expect it to go down here and stay down here when I'm studying? That's why, especially during an exam season, a lot of social media apps, you just have to delete them. Find a way to minimize all of these dopamine receptor fryers. And if you don't know which ones they are, just check your screen time. It will probably be the ones you use the most. Replace them with hobbies that actually relax you. Go on a long walk outside, do a sport, go to the gym, and so on. Those habits, they release dopamine in a healthy and sustainable way that doesn't drop all of a sudden. So when you go back to studying, you can focus. I'd recommend listening to the Huberman Lab podcast for an actual in-depth explanation of this. Now here's some things that you need to avoid to get those top grades. The first one is studying with your friends. I don't know why this one is as common as it is. You and your friends get together. You meet up in a cafe or at a library to study. You might start a fall, start doing practice questions or going through flashcards until one of your friends starts speaking and they tell you what they did last week. An hour or two passes by until you realize that you've been talking to your friends instead of studying this whole time. Does that sound familiar? That's why I always separate between studying and socializing. You could say, but no, it makes studying more fun and bearable, so I'm more likely to do it and enjoy it. But what happens when it just stops becoming fun? Are you also going to stop studying? We need to have discipline. Instead, I reserve time for studying efficiently on my own. And then I reserve time for socializing with my friends and going out and so on. And you know what the beauty of that is? Every time I'm out with my friends, I can actually enjoy it. I'm not thinking in my head, oh, I should be studying right now. Because I know that I've already ticked it off earlier. Another mistake you should avoid is treating every subject the same. Now every subject is nuanced and it's a bit different, so you have to approach them differently. That could sound obvious, but we don't really treat it like it is. Some subjects you're just going to have to rely on banging out as many practice questions as you can, like math. While in other subjects, you're going to have to spend more time memorizing the content. I've made videos detailing how I studied for every subject at GCSE, so check those videos out.